All right, so now we're going to talk about amniotomy. This one's going to be fairly short. This is artificial rupture of membranes. We've talked about this already in the context of inducing or augmenting labor, but sometimes this is done in the course of an active labor uh, for some other different reasons. So we've already looked at the procedure. An amni hook or an amni cot is used to tear the membranes and allow the fluid to escape. When would this be done? Well, it's used to induce or augment labor. Um, it can be used to assess for the color and amount of fluid, especially if there are some concerns. And it's needed to place internal monitors. We have to have broken water to place those internal monitors. What are the risks? Um, it can cause cord prolapse because especially if we have a big gush of fluid, uh, the cord can wash out with it cord compression because we've removed some of the cushion and there's a risk of infection. Once the waters are broken, we have to monitor temperature every two hours instead of every four because of the increased risk of infection. We, they, that bag is a barrier to infection. Nursing care. Um, we really, really like it when the provider lets us know they're going to break water because um, it tends to gush at first and so we need to have the bed padded. We need extra green pads, and also towels to try to absorb that extra water so that we don't have to move the patient around to change the whole bed. Um, we want to make to prepare the client. Ideally, the provider has also let the client know what's, what's going to happen. And then we want to monitor the fetal heart rate um, before, during, and after. And then every two hours, we check a temp, and then we monitor mom and baby for elevated heart rate because those are all signs of infection, okay? Um, the next thing we'll talk about is amnio infusion, and we're gonna, just gonna keep that in the same section. This is another reason possibly um, that we, we might use a, um, an internal monitor. Amnio infusion is infusing room temperature or warm sterile saline, saline solution, sterile solution, which can be either normal saline or Ringer's lactate into the uterus. It might be done if there's a low volume of amniotic fluid and we wanna to try to increase that. It might be done if the fetus is having a lot of variable D cells. That can indicate, remember, cord compression. So if we add that some of that cushion back, it can help. Um, providers used to do this to try to dilute meconium. If there was thick meconium in the amniotic fluid, um, they would try to dilute it so that it was less, um, it was thinner for uh, in case the fetus aspirated it. There's not really any evidence to support that that makes a difference. And so it's no longer recommended for that reason. The risk, if we're putting fluid out or if we're putting fluid into the uterus, we can increase the pressure in the uterus and it can eventually cause uterine rupture. So one thing we're monitoring for is making sure that fluid is coming out. There's also a risk of infection because not only do we have the catheter in, but we're also putting a fluid into the catheter, into the uterus. And if we're, again, if we overfill the uterus, it can cause decreased uterine tone, which can uh, mean they have a poor contraction pattern. It's harder for the uterus to contract to deliver the baby and can lead to postpartum hemorrhage. As far as nursing care, it is critical that you monitor to make sure fluid is coming back out because we're putting fluid in with this catheter, catheter that goes past the baby's head. The baby's head can drop down and act like a cork keeping all that fluid inside. So if we're pumping fluid in and nothing is coming out, we're increasing the pressure and we're at risk for uterine rupture. We also need to monitor uterine activity and we need to monitor that resting tone. If they're getting an amnio infusion, we can monitor uterine activity with that catheter. So we need to watch how strong are those contractions, but also what is the resting tone? Is it going up? Because that indicates there's more pressure in the uterus. Okay, the next section is going to be episiotomy.